Today I'm at GameStorm in Portland, Oregon, and I'm asking people what they remember about cheap-ass games. Well, I remember cheap-ass games uh, back in the old, old days. Uh, I thought it was really clever uh, having a game where you get your meeples or your chits or your money from Monopoly or other places. But I also remember being able to play those games just about anywhere and with very little time to prep or to you know figure out what you're doing. You know, the thing I remember most about cheap ass games in the beginning was somebody was smart enough to say, hey, you probably have all these bits at home, so I'm just going to give you the stuff you don't have, and you can play a great game, and it's inexpensive. Uh, I remember coming across uh, Cheap Ass Games when I first got into gaming uh, about maybe 15 years ago, and I came across them. I remember seeing the little white envelopes and wondering, what, what is this? But they were good. They were good games. Um, and as, as I you know, got into game design myself, uh, cheap ass games sort of provided a model for how to get going in game design, um, you know, without losing your shirt out of the gates. I remember well, a couple things. I remember first, I remember when they first showed up at the local game store, and everybody was just blown away that you could put a game in a paper bag and sell it to people. So the first time I saw cheap ass games, it was at Rainy Day Games. I was starting to get some new games, really getting into the thing, and I saw this um, Manila folder with pieces of paper in it, and I'm like, why would I spend money on paper when I could just print it up at home? And then I remember seeing you at Gen Con probably uh, 2000 or 2001, whatever the first year that they moved into Indianapolis was, and being excited, I have a signed copy of uh, the Rocket game somewhere. So that's, and then I saw later, I was like, oh, this guy's a big deal. <laughs> but I still didn't buy the game. <laughs> Before we had our current gamer explosion, Cheap Ass Games was there. And it was some of the ways that people got into the hobby and people's exposure to something that was more than just the typical Hasbro game. They're always extremely well thought out mechanically speaking. They're fairly fast paced, they don't take up a large footprint, and they are open ended to a large age range. Yeah. I see you're playing Unexploded Cow. Yeah. Unexploded Cows, yes. It, it is it's, awesome. I love it. It's pretty hilarious. Yeah. And I like that we can play it as a two player. That's kind of a big deal for us. Um, and we have a two and a five year old. So we can buy these games knowing we can play with them when they're a little older. Uh, I love Unexploded Cow. It's definitely one of my favorite games to sit down and play with my family. Uh, first time I picked it up, I read the back and had to buy it. Uh, I was introduced to Cheap Ass Games at PAX, back when it was PAX Prime, and I ran into Veritas, a game where you are playing a version of the truth. And it was so strange and so esoteric. I absolutely fell in love with it. My brother gave me Kill Dr. Lucky with the real cheap ass games where it's got that thin cardboard backing and the little uh, cardstock pieces that flip and flap all over the table. Um, and I think when he gave me the game at the end of the day, we stuffed everything in there, even though you just smashed it into the, uh, the cardboard that folded up together like an envelope. The next time when I should have ran, we opened it up, but like all these pennies started falling out because they were our counters. It was also fun because uh, James actually let me blow up uh, biting off heads to a six foot by eight foot thing. And I bought giant dinosaurs from Kmart and uh, let kids play and have a good time with this life-size version of biting off heads. When I was introduced to TAC, I saw someone who was superb at the game playing it. And like watching a great chess master, like watching Mikhail Tall, when I saw this person playing, it was so beautiful to watch and to see the see people's minds working against each other, it, it almost moved me to tears. It was truly a beautiful game to watch play. And I've introduced all of my friends to it. My spouse loves it. Uh, it's tied with chess for my favorite game of all time. I guess what I remember about Cheap Ass Games is um, the pay scales. And I really appreciate it as a, as a teacher. The teacher pay scale was like, um, it was, I, I don't remember the names of them, but they kind of went up by occupation, like the occupation you had. The, like if you were an astronaut, you had to pay this much and, and so on. And then the teacher one was like basically free or like $1. And so I really appreciated that, like really kind of shout out to the profession. And it really made me like understand the whole 
mantra of what Cheap Ass Games is about? Uh, well, the thing I really want to tell you, which I feel like a little sheepish saying, is that I have never played a Cheap Ass Game, and I feel like I need to fix that. I have relatives with big milk crates full of manila envelopes, and when approaching them saying, what's all this filing? They're like, oh, these are little games that I got out of a magazine years ago, and I've never played them. Uh, but they look like they come in a plastic bag with some like a bag or envelope and uh, you know I like the ethic but I just never I wasn't into games when they were popular and now they're they're still popular but they're not I'm just rambling now <laughs> yeah cheap ass um, my husband got me into games and your game specifically was really fun uh, the uh, dice cheap ass game with the characters you're talking about button men yeah button men there we go yeah, so we play Button Men, and it's something that we could both pick up really easily, and he can teach me how to play it, and so I had a lot of fun kind of evening out the playing field uh, with each other. So Cheap Ass Games is like the best concept in the world, and when you have a designer like James Ernest actually doing games that people can afford, what more can you ask for? Except Kill Dr. Lucky is something that I have not yet been able to do. So I'm very aggravated, but I love the game. <laughs> Although the card, the game has a card called Runcible Spoon, yeah. and uh, we were saying Runcible Spoon to each other for a good, I don't know, two months afterwards, yeah, just spoon. randomly. We never stopped runcible saying Runcible Spoon. spoon. Just over and over. It's Runcible it was, Spoon uh, every day. So you know, that's, yeah. uh, that's what cheap ass games is for, is experiences like that. <laughs> Deadwood is one of my favorites, and I love the new addition, the new rules. Um, uh, Kill Dr. Lucky was a lot of fun, and I was glad to see the different editions that came through. It was in college where I first uh, encountered Cheap Ass Games, and me and my friends loved it. We played it for hours on end, and I just want to thank Cheap Ass Games for their creativity and just so many hours of entertainment. Meeting James at a con in 2007 when I was just starting out as a publisher. A very slow dealer's hall and we talked about poker and we talked about game publishing and sort of uh, gave me a real good grounding in sort of the realities of doing this stuff. So uh, I appreciate Cheap Ass Games for like helping me meet my wife uh, and have a good time with her as a kid and then also uh, helping me kind of find my feet in the gaming industry. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, yeah, cool.